Now, look at it here. They said um, you have n here, n function. You can see, huh? Everybody can see? Okay. Um, why you see this one? Look at the domain, okay? When t equals, from, equals zero and less than six, that's f, f t. And the one is it six to eight is this, but it equals, be careful, huh? there's an equal sign there for the six. And then greater than equals eight is this one, okay? First, uh, they show you that the n of the fish, the number of the fish in the pond at the time t years is modeled by the function n defined above. So that means at the beginning zero to six, you have ft, that many fish in the pond. And then six to eight this time, t is years, time in years, six years and after until eight is this many, okay? And then after that is this many, okay? Now, they also told you that F t, f0 equals 80. Let me ask um, um, Amando. f0 equals 80 means what? How about n0? n0 also equals what? One t, Dominic, one t equals zero. That's f zero, right? Equals eighty, and it means n zero equals what? Sorry, eighty. Is here, and t t equals zero. T equals zero. You can look at it here, not this two, eh? the first one, and then t equals zero. So n zero equals f zero equals eighty. What does that mean? Means at the beginning of the year, how many fish in the pond? How many? Amanda? 80. 80, that's right, right? Dominic, Anson, Anna? <coughs> okay. <clears throat> right now, the first one they ask you limits at t approach infinity of nt. So if you want to do Limit t approach to infinitive and t, right? You look at nt is a piecewise function, Dominic. Do you need to look at this, this, or this? The last one, because that's a time in the year more than eight already, right? So this is about a piecewise function. So what do we need to do is <coughs> we need to put this is the limit t approach to infinity two hundred plus eighty over two plus zero point zero five t. You see that we have to substitute the n t by this one, this piece. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so when we get this, what's next for n? How do you do that? How do you do this limit? t equals to infinity, right? Mm -hmm. When we say t is to infinity, it means what? t may can go to billions and zillions, whatever, but still keep going. It's not t approach to infinity, but doesn't mean just a fixed number. If it's a million, maybe it keeps going. Two millions, three millions, trillions, billions, trillions, whatever, go up forever. Because this is a, infinity actually is a process approach to forever. So it's not a fixed number. But we can use a fixed number as some example to see what's going on. For example, t equals a billion. 200, two, can you ignore? Right? Like a billions, a trillions, 202, you can be ignored. So that will be make this one equal to what? 80 T over 0 0.05 T. 
limit still t approach to zero uh, infinity because this one can be ignored because compared with a huge number this one can be ignored when you do that t and t cancel right so you simply do what a divided by to the calculation press a divided by the AD divided by 0 0.05, we got what, 1600. So we find the limits of NT when T approaches infinity. You got it? Now, let me ask Dominic, what does this mean? You spend meaning of this one in the context of this problem. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, that means one t equals to infinity forever if you do not take any if the number of the fish follow the function of this piecewise function eventually they just keep it 1600 fish okay that means you may have a new fish born but you have old fish die so eventually that's the, that's the number okay now <clears throat> we finish this part. Any questions so far? Dominic, this is your question. No problem. Understand? Clear? Okay, good. Now we're gonna go to the second one you have, the continuous this one actually. Right? The V now. The V they said <clears throat> is the function n continuous at t equals eight. Okay. I write it down here first, so we're gonna go back to this question, the function, right? So they ask you, t equals eight is nt continuous. Right? That's the question about, huh? Now, <clears throat> let's see. So this time, Amanda, how do you tear? So we have the function here, but I just the question is this huh, for the VN. How do you tear if the function is continuous or not? What are you gonna do? You plug in eight. You plug in eight? Okay, what's the definition for the continuous at X? Oops. Okay, I just write down the question one more time. So they ask you the question this, t equals eight, right? Mm -hmm. If the nt continues, right? Okay, let me ask Zoe, what's the definition for continuous of the function nt? at t equals eight. For math, a lot of situation will start from what the definition, because they ask me if it's continuous or not, right? That's, so we go back to what, logically we go back to what is the uh, definition of continuous. And then we check if this specific function fit all this definition. If it is, we say yes. If it's not, we say no, right? Is that simple, right? Okay. Now, if you have this, and what's the definition? Okay, value of the function equals the limits of the function at t equals eight, right? Very good, very good. So that means when you say limit t approach to eight and t exists if this one exists means what from the left side approach eight eight must be equals what from
from the right side of coach A. This, this part means the limits exist. Only the left limit, the right limit equal. That's the limit, right? But that one equals what? Equals an age. That's what um, Anna said, right? We need to make the limits equals the value of the function. They're equal. Is that clear? Okay. <clears throat> so when you have this, <clears throat> we just check now, right? We check. When we check, Dominic, when you look at the piece by the function, how do you find this? How do you find it? Yes. Which piece of the uh, piece by the function you're going to use? 25 t because you are from the left side of the age, right? Do you agree, Amanda? Yes. Okay, good. We follow that, okay? So we do limits and a t approach to age from left side will be equal to 25 times by the age, because this is a continuous, eh? this is a polynomial, it's a linear function, so we direct the plug in the age, right? So from left side, eh? and then plus 150. He goes what? So it's a calculation. This is 200. How much is that? 25, eight quarters, two, two, half, two dollars, right? So eight times by 25 plus 150, 350. You got it? Okay. Now we need to check on this one now, right? Let me show you this part. This time, Amanda, what are you gonna do? Limit T approach to age from the right side. And T, what piece are you gonna use? The third one, right? Why third one? Because this time T is what? More than eight, right? Very good. So you're gonna have uh, 200 at about 80 times by eight, right? Divided by two plus 0 0.05 times by eight. When you see the T, put the eight, right? And then we'll do the calculation now here. Everyone do it. Make sure we need to improve our accuracy and the speed, okay? That's why all, we always hands off. <clears throat> and that will be benefited. Plus. So what do you got? What do you got, Dominic? Work hands on, is it no calculator? I think it's dead. What do you mean dead? No battery? Yeah. Okay. What? The phone? Yeah, use the phone. Every time to walk, hands on. Right, what do you got? What do you got? 350. 350, everybody got that? Okay, 350, yeah. Okay, now we find the left limit is 350, right limit equals 350. Can we say this is true? This part is true now? Everybody? What does that mean? It means the function NT is right function at t equals eight, the limits exist. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. No problem, huh? Okay. If that's now, what is going to do next? We're going to check with n8. What's n8 now? Which piece are you going to use, Zoe? Hmm? The first one? You mean this one? Which one? We're talking about t equals eight, right? Which function here with the domain t equals eight? Third one. Third one, when we do that one, just do this part, right? Same, man. Eh? See that? They're equal. You got it. So is the function continuous at t equals eight? Yes or no? 
Dominic. Yes, because we knew the definition of continuity is that left limit equals right limit equals the function. We showed that. So fit with definition. So the function continues. No problem? All right, pretty good so far. Now we go to next one. The third one, Dominic asked this question here. <clears throat> if function n is continuous t equals six, is there a time t for t greater than equals zero, less than equals six, at which n t equals 250? Justify your answer. How do you do this one? Anna, what's in your mind when you look at this question? Mm. Huh. Now, first thing first, they said what? N is continuous at t equals six. What does that mean? Means at six, eh? That means at this point, at this point here, huh? got it? What does that mean? Means from that given, we can immediately write down what is the equation here. We have what limit t from, uh, t approaches six from left side, and t must be equal to what? Limit, T approach to six from the right side of the NT, right? And also must be equal to what? N six. That's that's the one sentence they said T is con T N is continuous at six. Means you have this. No problem. Okay. If you have this, <clears throat> and then can we so let's go back to this question again. So when we have this, can we find the n t negative and negative side? We'll do this part here. How do you find this now? How do you how do you find uh, t equals six and t? Uh, t approaches six from left side. And uh, how do you find this part? Um, use the. Uh huh. What's that? You want to go back, huh? Go back to the function so you can see. Oh, the function's right here already. Look at it here. Yeah. From left side approaches six. Which one are you going to use? Three pieces. The first one. The first one. Good. So that means this one will be equals to, we we'll use the first one, right? Mm -hmm. So the first one we have limits. It was nt, but nt, one x, one t is less than six, equals what, ft, see that? So that means this one you can change to t approach to six from left side, that will be ft. You see that? Right, and then what's n six? Huh? How do you find n six, Dominic? Second one, good. That means what? Twenty five times by six plus hundred fifty, right? You got that? Huh? Calculate it. Three hundred, right? Okay. Now, can you find this now, Amanda? This thing goes up. The limits from the left side of the six approach to six. Ft equals up. Three hundred. Three hundred, because the left limit must be equals right limit equals this value of function, right? That's because they told you t. N is continuous when t equals six, okay?
So we know this one equals 300, no problem. Okay, <clears throat> now. And then we go like this, up at F0. F0 is up. Hmm? F0 is up? 80, right? It totally equals 80, huh? Right? So, you see the functions like this, huh? They ask, let's go back to this question now here. Is here, uh, we go to this question here, this one, huh? They ask you, functions contain a T of six. They ask you what? Is there a time T? Okay, they, the question for this question is this. They said if you have a T greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to six at this time, in between this one, uh, if n t possibly equals 250, means the year in between zero year to six year is a possible sum year in between the fish in the pound is 250. That's, that's what they're asking, okay? And just find your answer. So how do you do that? How do you just value answer here? What are you gonna do? Okay. If I say something, um, we know the um, F zero equals 80 means what? N zero equals what? How many? Is N zero, F zero the same? Equals 80. Means at the beginning, you have 80 fish there. And then we know at um, N equals six, at T equals six, how many fish there? 300, right? And then also they told you that, okay, look at it here. It, it's, they said, it, they're not saying A is continuous, right? But they just say what? F is continuous. F is continuous, but F and N, they're equal one time in between zero and six. So we can say N is also continuous in between T greater than zero or less than six. No problem. Right? Okay. If this is a continuous function, we have what? N six. Oh, here's six. We have we have N six. We have N6 equals 250. We have, oh no, N6, oh, N6 is 300, or if it's 60. So we have N, we have N6, oh, like this. They asked you, no, this, one, this is the, I put you the question here. We were asked to find a what? and t in between this one, okay? Yeah. Must be equal, if equals uh, 250, right? But we know n6 equals 300. We know n0 is 80, and n is continuous in between zero and six, right? Do you remember we call it as a mean value theorem? Do you remember? Let's review that for now, okay? Mean value theorem. The story is this. I just show, use the graph to illustrate mean value theorem, okay? Here, like this. This is a T, this is the function, okay? This is N, okay? And T like this, huh? They told you that 
when n equal uh, t equals zero, for example, here is a, right? And then when t equals what? Six, for example, this is a six. The equals what? How many? 300, right? So that means you have a here one point and a here one point, no problem. I don't care what the graph goes. They may go from here, go to here. Or they may go what? From here, go to here, whatever. Or they may go like this. But just remember, there is no hole, right? Okay. If there is no hole, what does that mean? Hmm? Means continuous, right? Okay. If there's no hole, from this point to this point, they must pass, for example, somewhere here is 250, okay? From here, for example, there's 250 just like the wall here. You want from here go there, are you going to pass in that one? Right? Maybe, the, maybe they're passing this point more than once. It does, right? But at least there was one time. Is that clear? Everybody see the picture? What I'm showing you right now actually we're reviewing with the beginning chapter is that what we call it as what? Mean value theorem. In short, we put as M V T. But this is there are two M V T there. Why is the M V T continuous? The other one is M V T differentiation. Later on, we're going to touch that one. But right now, we just focus on this one. So, what's the theorem in general say? If at the beginning, f, for example, f zero, or whatever, maybe f a, okay. Maybe let's say F A equals to, um, for example, is, uh, we'll just say C, okay? F B equals what? A D, okay? Right? Of course, A, well, here we have A greater than B and uh, C greater than, uh, no, D greater than C, okay? Just like this case. Maybe C is uh, greater than D doesn't matter. And then we guarantee you have one value of the, uh, we put it as um, Q, okay? We guarantee there is one point there inside here in between. The Q should be in between C and the D. And then the FQ will be less than what the D and the bigger than the C like that. Example, same thing. Because F0 equals 80. Oh, this N, huh? So you have what? You have like uh, N0 is 80, this is 80. And the N six is what? 300. So guarantee there is one value in between zero and this one. We have N T in between, right? The T is in between, right? Between zero and the six should be greater than this, less than this. So that means you do have one value of N T, maybe more than one. Get it? Right, so this is called the mean value theorem. So, uh, uh, Dominic raised up a very good free response question. Okay, from one, you see, from one question, how many concept theorems definitions involved? Right, so that's what we're not just like um, using single theorem definitions, we combine both shows that what we overall understand the theorem, the questions, and then we apply to those, right? 
Okay, now, so far so good. Any question? No problem? Okay, we go to the next part, okay? Go to the other question now. Amanda, you're not raising up the question, huh? Eh? I'm waiting for your question, okay? Now this time, uh, we're gonna go to this one here. Oh no. Oh, where's the Oh, you're talking about there is one question. I just go one at a time, one for each, okay? Oh, here, this one. Because um, <clears throat> uh, some students uh, uh, and ask for this is the first. This oh, is this? no, 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 the other one, the free response one. Oh, free response one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I know what you're talking about. Uh, that's this one, right? Yeah. That's this one, right? This is a Q free response. Yeah. Free, free response question, skill two. Okay, remember? Uh, unit two, part A, huh? free response. Okay, we'll go there now. <clears throat> um, you needed to, is this one? Yeah. Okay, this one, hold on. Uh, Zoe, is this the one you raised up before? Right, I put in the video. This one in the video there, in this week's video. <laughs> Did you watch that one? The video. Oh, hold on. Let me just find it. Let me show you. Let me show you where is. It. Um. Can you see this? The screen. Can you read it? Okay. It's pretty small. Um, okay. Now. The graph of the function f and its derivative f derivative are showing for negative one until four. So the x is negative one until four, right? Right? This is negative one, two, three, two, three, four, like this, huh? Now, <clears throat> the A says that find the average rate of change. Find the average rate of change of f over the interval negative one. Average rate of change. For how many value of the x in the of this one, does the instantaneous rate of the change of the function equals the average rate of change of, over the interval, right? Now, first thing first, how do you find out the average rate of change of the f? What is the definition for that? What is the definition? <clears throat> Amanda, definition. Dominic, average rate of change. Uh, and uh, what's the rate of average rate of change? Oh no. Average, see, find the average rate of change over this interval means you have F4 minus F negative one over four minus one. Just like a graph, this actually is easy for you to remember. For example, this is the A, this is the B. The graph like this, right? So how do you find average of rate, rate of change? Actually, they're looking for a slope of this line, the second line, connecting to end point. So that would be what F B minus F A divided by B minus A. That's what we call it as average rate of change. Average. Average rate of change. Okay, we gotta remember that. 
So when you do this one, we just simply what? Plug in number in, right? Plug in number in, right? F4, what's F4 now? F4 is, what's F4, Armando? One. One minus F negative one, which is negative two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch out the sign, huh? You notice that when you have a negative there, I put a parenthesis there, okay? Just avoid the sign error. And the B minus that is a four minus one, like this, huh? So you have a three over three equals one. So this one equals one now, right? We find the average of rate of change. Now, the second part of this question A. For how many values of X in the interval of this, right? Does the instantaneous rate of the change equal to what? Average rate of change. This is what I said about what? Huh? This is, I just said what? Mean value theorem about the differentiation. Okay? We just use another one. Remember we said that the, the, from one point to the other, if function continues, you have to cross someone, right? That's called the mean value theorem for the continuous. But right now we're using this thing. First, before we use that one, do you remember what that mean? Dominic? Mean value theorem is called, this one is called the mean value theorem of D uh, range derivative of okay, okay, derivative. All right. What's that? Okay. What's that mean? Do you remember? Cannot? Okay, let me show you how here. This is the graph, right? This is the function. And the FB, FB minus FA. So this one minus this one divided by of A. This is the average of the change. They said if the FX, okay, the theorem said if FX continues, continues, okay? If fx is continuous, continuous in the close interval a, b, fx continues in the close interval a, b, and also fx derivative at the open interval of a b means open interval of a b like this. Of course, close interval is fine, but this is at least you got to be open interval differentiable. Close interval continues. Then they said what? Guarantee at least you have one value of the C. For example, here this is C, okay? That's here. Tangent line. Slope should be the same as what? The second line. So what does that mean? Means this one must be equal to what? Derivative. At least you have a C there. They said at least there is a C. There is a C there. C must be what? Bigger than A less than B. This is total we call it as a mean value theorem of differentiation or derivative. Geometrical meaning, if you knew that, it's easier for you to remember. They just say, if you have a function, this is the blue one, this is the function fx. Function continues this. F function should be continuous, close interval a and b. 
and fx differentiable in between a and b, open interval. Then slope of this second line, which we also call as what average rate of change, same as the slope of the tangent line at one point. At least you have one point there. Maybe you have another point somewhere here. Okay, but they just say at least you have one C. You C must be in between A and B. The the tangent line slope must be equal to second line slope. That's a general impression about the theorem of the mean value theorem. Is that clear now? Okay, we quickly review on this, and then we apply this one to this question now. Okay, you see. It's not that hard. You just need to know the theorem because if you do not know, first thing first, even though you know the theorem, you don't know when to apply it, that's the problem. And if you do not know the theorem, <laughs> absolutely you don't know, right? So what do we learn this calculus is this, first you should know the theorem. We understand all this first because this is the foundation we need to know about the mean value Theorem differential, right? And then we're gonna apply this now, okay? Now here, they said find the how many values of f of x there in between this one, that's the instantaneous rate. They said in, the instantaneous rate of change, that's what f derivative, okay? Must be equals average rate of change. What's the average rate of change? When we say average, average, average rate of change is what? Looking for this. This is slope of the second line, right? See that? What do we got? Average rate of change, we got it? Yeah. One, right? We got it here. Huh? So that means this one equals one. Right? Now, where is the function equals one? How many values of that? Because of the function here, we, we're not, we, even though we give this as a function, the, but they gave you a graph of derivative here. Can you find this now? F derivative equals one. This is a graph of F derivative. Huh? So this is the one. Use the cross the line like this. Okay, for how many values of X in the interval from negative one from here, negative one to four here. How many value of this one here, x value, does the instantaneous rate of change of f equals the average rate of the change f over the that interval? Over that interval, the average of rate of change we know is one, but we make a derivative equals one. How many value of x? How many value of x? Amanda, how many value of x? How many value of x? How many? Anna? Two. Two, Zoe, how many? How many? <laughs> <laughs> Dominic, how many? Two. Two. Okay, let me just uh, show you one more time. Here. In between negative one and one, right? This is derivative. Must be equal to one, right? So we use the horizontal line. It's so one. So you have here. You have here, right? You have here, right? You have here, right? So it means how many x there? How many x here? How many x here? Infinity. Infinity. Because you have uh, x equals zero, and you have x what? Greater than two equals two, and then less than three. But for this part, you should have what? Infinity here. You see that? Yeah? This part. 
to this one here. Okay. Because you have an infinity many dots in between two and the three. Get it? That's it? Okay. So you see here, this one question related to what? Mean value theorem, right? Differentiation, average of change, right? And the instantial rate of change. Instantial rate of change, just what? The slope of tangent line, right? So, so many things, huh? Okay, now we move on to number, letter B now, okay? Write the equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals to one. Write the equation of the line tangent the graph of f x equals one. f equals one here. They ask you to find the equation of the tangent line. They ask you to find this tangent line equation. How do you do that? <clears throat> at the one, huh? right? Okay, we go like this. If if the like this, huh? x is a one, y is what? Huh? So I have a point here, one and a two. No problem. Okay, we use a slow a point slope form of the line, okay? And when I say point slope form, Amount, oh, do you know what I'm talking about? What's that? <laughs> okay, y minus y1 equals what? Slope and x minus x1. Dominic, do you agree? Right, this is called a point slope form. Amount is great, you remember this. Now, what's x1, y1? We're plugging in now, okay? Y minus Y1. What's Y1? Two, right? Get it? Equals slope and X minus X1, which is one. No problem. Now, they ask you what? Find the equation of the line of the graph of X equal F, of the F at X equals one. We almost got this already, the equation of the tangent line, except what? The slope. This slope should be equals what? Derivative of the function, one x equals one, no problem? Okay, so what's derivative of the one? Uh, derivative of the function, one x equals one. Huh? This is a derivative function. Negative two, right? Here, right? X equals one. You go here, this is negative two. So we knew this is negative two. So we can find it what y minus two equals negative two, right? X minus one. Can you follow me? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Pretty good? Yeah? Beautiful, right? And <clears throat> when you have this one, right? Maybe they ask you the answer, give you, ask you to change the slope in that form. That's fine, that's easy. Just add by two, add by two, right? So you get a y equals what? Negative two, x minus one plus two. So y equals two, this one times this one, negative two x, this one times this one, plus two, plus two. Finally, y equals negative two x plus four. Get it? No problem? Yeah, that's pretty good, eh? So, we go to the C now, okay? Well, when we do this one, you notice that we just simply use point slope form. Amanda told us that, this one, right? So you see how close the calculus related to the, the previous math, and in time, you don't know which part they're gonna be used. You just based on the question they ask, recall what you have. So that's why we need to have a solid foundation of the basic math first and any time, just like a toolbox, we can go there anytime, pick up the whatever I need to fix this problem, right? Get it? Okay. Now we just go to the letter C now here. 
for each of the each of the limits f h minus okay and f minus three okay find the value of the find the value and give a reason why it's not exist oh, okay here now uh, let me just erase this part first so give us a little bit space here I put the question here bigger so you can see they ask you to find the value of what x approach to two right f x minus f two and x minus two so why you see this you need to find this right what's the value what's this mean first you should know what this mean huh sorry Okay, I'm um, Anna. Is that the average rate of change? Average rate of change? Dominic? Okay, look at it here. Is what? Rate of change, no problem with that, huh? Okay, I put the graph. Oh, just like this one here? Okay, I just change from here easier. So, like this one here. This one, okay? We just change it from here. For example, for example, I just uh, go here. Let me see the of this, okay? So I put this as x. This value is x. This is a two, right? So if you do that, what happens? I erase this part first. So if you go average rate of change, will be what? will be f x which is this one now huh? the value of this one minus f2 minus f2 right and over x minus 2 x minus 2 this is average of change but they have what limits x approaching 2. if you have this one what's that it would be hmm Amanda? This means the value of the x approach to two means what? X is not here, it's going to here right now, right? The function value will be what? Along this blue curve, go to here, right? For example, it's here, so you gotta have this. And when you keep going to here, you gotta have this. Eventually they have what? Tangent line slope. Because at this point, along this one, go this way, go this way, go this here. So this one represents what? F to derivative. This is a derivative definition at a certain point. Get it? Of course, you may remember more about this kind of format, F derivative of that, A, Oh, I, I use two, okay, so make it close to this question. Remember, we have this one here. F derivative of the two will be equal to what? Limit x approach to two. Oh, no, my bad here. So you may remember this formula more better than that one. H approach to zero, F two plus H minus F two. Divided by H like this one, right? Remember that, right? But the things that what, if you go H, two plus H, you consider the X. What, right, consider the X. So, okay, if you change two plus H equals the X, like this. So this is F2, right? So you will change this one to what? Limits. And as you approach zero, see here? As you approach to zero, x approaches two. So this one changes to x approaches two. And fx minus f2. And as you approach to zero means x approaches two. So from here, 
what's h equals x minus two? So we're gonna x minus two, same as this one, see that? So this is the one format of definition, limits definition of differentiation. This is another form. On the Apex book, show that already, should we? Okay? Huh? How do you get h? Because uh, I said here, one more time, huh? I said uh, 2 plus h equals x. I put this one as x. This one is x. So, if you have x is the x, when x approaches, this one into x approaches 0, that means what? x approaches 2. So, x, this one changed to h, x approaches 2. And then you move the two on this side, you got h equals this one, x minus two. So this h, this h substituted by the x minus two. This one is going to, right? And then this top part is the x. So actually this definition of derivatives, this definition of derivatives, they're the same. But you, for you, I knew the challenge is that when you look at this one, and I said, this, this looks like the average of rate of change. But if you go to x approach to two, that will be what? That will be instantaneous of instantaneous rate of change. It's not average anymore. You get it? Because the limit is involved. Instantaneous rate of change. Okay? So that's all here. Um, the C that will find the value of this, right? This means the instant derivatives now, right? So if you know that, can you find the F2 derivative now? Can you find it now? Um, Amanda, can you find it now? F2, this one equals F2, huh? F2 derivative, right? You're looking for this now. You're looking for this, right? This one equals F2 of 2. We know that. So what's that? Huh? Can you find it, Dominic? Because yeah. x equals two, eh? Because this is derivative, eh? This is a derivative function. X equals one, go up. This is what, two. Oh, this is one. Get it? Okay. Now let's do this one right here. Dominic, I ask you one more time. How do you find this now? Huh? The second part. Amanda. Huh? <laughs> yeah, of course. So this one, same as what? Derivative three, right? What do you got? Undefined. Undefined. Why undefined? Zoe. Is this? This one means like this. Okay, let me put it here, okay? I just erase this part first. So we've got even space. Here. It's like this. Um, the derivative, we knew that this one, right? This is the limits, right? But you can change this one to like this. This one, you can change it to limit x approach to three from left side. Fx minus f3 over x minus three. This actually is, we call it as a left derivative at x equals three. Because what, you know what I mean? Huh? Amara? One. One, because this is from this side approach. That's here. This equals one. And then you can do what? Limit x approach to three from the right side. Fx minus f3 over x minus three. Equals that? Hmm? Tell me. Because from this side, right? You go down. Negative one. You see, this limit not exist because the left limit and the right limits, they're not equal. 
Is that clear? Right? So nice, huh? <laughs> Get it? Huh? Hey, Anna, no problem? Sorry? Okay. So now we go to the next one. Okay? Now let's try to oh, okay, it's blocked already. I'm gonna make it smaller. Hold on. Okay. Okay, let's look at this question now here. You can see, right? The D now, right? So, well, therefore, the C, why they're not exist because the lateral limits of right limits are equal. So, limits is not exist. Is that clear, right? Okay. So, D now, let G be the function defined by this. Okay. They ask you to find the G derivative. And uh, how do you start on this question? Mm -hmm. I gotta erase everything. Yeah. How do you start on this question? So they told you that, <clears throat> they told you that G X equals to e x time by f x like this, all right? Got it? Now they ask you to find the g derivative of x first and then plug in x equals zero, right? How do you do that? What the method are you gonna use? What theorem are you gonna use? Hmm? What theorem are you gonna use? Mm -hmm. General. Zoe, what are we going to use? Product rule. Dominic, you got it? Okay. Let's just use the uh, product rule now, okay? Product rule told us that the root of this one first. So we have what? But EX, the root is still EX, huh? You know that, right? And time by FX, right? And the plus. We keep the x and then derivative of what? The function. Can you follow me that? Okay. Now you're gonna put what? X equals what? Zero, right? Get it? Okay. When you have f equals zero, what do you got now? X equals zero, plug in, eh? E zero, f zero, plus e zero f derivative of zero. Can you follow me so far? Huh? Uh, Amanda, agree so far? Okay, what's e zero? Amanda? One. <laughs> One. How about five zero, Dominic? Five to zero power? Yeah. Any number to zero power is one, okay? So this is a one, never mind. And f zero, what's f zero now here? Hmm? Zoe, f zero. Three, right? It's about three, yeah. So we just based on the graph. This is three times one, never mind, just three. And this is a one, never mind. We just look at the, this now here. F derivative of the zero, right? So is that? F derivative of the zero equals what, Anna? One. One, now that's from here. See that? This is a one, add together equals a four. Good? Very good. So this is a very interesting question. Enjoy, yeah? Huh? Right, everybody? Okay. No more questions? If you have no more questions, we are going to move on. Uh, okay. Let f be the continuous function defined from negative one to eight here, right? Negative, negative one to eight. And the whose graph consists of what? Uh, two line segments. It's shown above. Let G and H be the function defined by this and this. This is another two function. Eh? Now, they ask you the function K is defined by this. Find the K zero. I just, I just do this one first. And now, even though I have a recording there, 
but I just want to show you how to fit with their um, solution steps, okay? So when you have this one, see, every time when you do K, oops, when you do K derivative of the X, since this X is the product of two functions, Kx is the product of f and g, right? So we need to go by what? Mm, Dominic? What method are we gonna use? Kx equals this now, right? We need to find the derivative of the k. What's rule we're gonna use? Cosine rule. This is what multiply, right? This one times this one, right? When we do the derivative, what's rule we're gonna use? Mando. Product rule. Product rule, right? Product rule said put the derivative of this f first. And time by gx, right? And add by fx to leave it there and derivative of the gx. That's the one, right? And then, next step is what? We do derivative of the f. When you do derivative of the f here is what? Five, and the ex derivative is still ex, and a minus nine. What sign derivative equals what, Zoe? Hey? <laughs> Be careful, huh? Sine x derivative equals cosine x. But cosine x derivative equals a negative sine x. Don't, because remember it, okay? This is the things you gotta do by yourself. Don't make this kind of mistake, huh? You lose the points on this kind of mistake, it's like a really sad. But some of them is, I think, if you, of course, you, got, you may not answer correctly because you do not know which way to go. This one you know, you gotta get it correct, okay? For the one you know, we need to get it correct there. So this one time by cosine x. This is a derivative of this one. Time by gx, right? Or gx, we just say, square root, square root, x squared, minus x plus three, right? Like this. And then we add the second part, fx. fx is a five e x minus nine sine x, like this one, right? And then time by uh, gx, oh uh, no, uh, fx, oh, and then the, Wait, 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 hold on. This is a, my bad here, hold on. Is this, <clears throat> not like that. F derivative, we're gonna use this formula because we're looking for what? We're looking for, <clears throat> we're looking for x equals zero, right? Because here x equals zero. So we gotta put in what? F zero derivative. What's F zero derivative? You go that? This is the F, huh? This is a straight line. The slope should be what? Same. So slope, the derivative, okay. F derivative zero, that's the slope of the line for the first leg, right? You go that? Rise. We pick up the corner point. It's easy to read, right? Oops, sorry. So, rise, go up, and the round, go this way. This is slope. This one equals F derivative of zero. So you're gonna have what? F zero is what? Rise, two units. Round one unit, so two. This one just, just what? Two over one, get it? GX, G zero, just root three. 
See that? Right? And then plus F0. F0 just three here, this point. And then G derivative of that one, or we just did derivative of that. G derivative, G derivative, oh, G derivative is this. Because G X equals what? X squared minus X plus three half power, right? G derivative of this one equals what? Power root, huh? right? X squared minus X plus three. What's the power root here? What's the exponent right now, uh, Anna? Yes, it's half minus one, right? Equals negative half. You can do mental math here. And then chain rule go inside. So what's inside here should be? Hmm? I did the power root, put it in front. And this power reduced by one. You got negative half. And then we go inside. What do you got there? Derivative, right? Dominic? 2x and then minus one, minus one like this, huh? But we just make what x equals zero there. When you got x equals zero, 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 this is a half, right? This is just three, negative one half, and then this zero is just negative one like this, huh? You do whatever, okay? Now, I'm trying to show you here is this. Um, they have the answer key here. They gave you the answer that Let's look at what they're asking to look at, okay, here? Here. Uh, the first thing, they ask if I'm this one, right? But they have the solution at the bottom here. So they said what? So this is the one that gives me to school you. But the student's response accurately include all the three criteria. First, you need to find F prime. You see, we find, F derivative of F, right? Remember that question? We find the F derivative here. Like this one, right? Remember? Right? We use this rise over R. Huh? So, so first step, they ask you. So when I, if I grade, oh, the, this time I graded, but the later on when you take the real AP exam will be the AP the grader, they will do that. So they, they will see if you find the F zero derivative first. We find that. They have to find a G derivative. You see here, X goes zero here, X goes zero here. We do that, right? And then find the K derivative. You need to find this three. So, product root first, right? And then F derivative zero equals two from the graph. We do that, now. We did like here, rise from here, rise two. Round one, huh? Let's say I got two. And then also there's a G derivative of zero equals that. So we calculate this now here. Everyone got your calculator to this part now here. Let's see if we got that one. So when you key in this one here, I show you how to train it faster, okay? Here, you follow me. When you see half, you put 0.5 there. Time by three <coughs> to the power. Everyone got your calculator. To the power, you put a parenthesis, negative one, negative 0.5 is fine. Oh, negative one over two is fine. You got it? Closing. And then you time by negative one, just change sign. So you got what? Negative 2.88675. Got it? So make sure you can quickly get this one. Do not know? Amanda got it? Amanda, how to get it? This is phone, right? You got that one. Okay, that's good. So now, and they ask you what? Find the k derivative zero. You just plug in the value. You got that one, right? So I'm trying to show you this one just because you will see what's their expectation, right? Okay, now let's look at the, they have a second part here. Okay, I just erase this part first. Um, so, and then when you go to the second part question, 
here. Uh, or this is the A, yeah? You got to be part of B now. When you have part of B, they ask you to find the what? So let's look at what's the question about the part of B, okay? Part of B, they ask you if the function M is defined by this. Eh? So I just put it here first so we can quickly discuss something here. So you have M X equals to F X over to g of the x like this right now when you have this they ask or they ask you to find the derivative of the five of m huh? so when you look at this one first thing first of course we know when you do derivative you know what use use what rule uh amando when you do the m derivative what should we gonna use? Quotient good. But this is one one over two, you probably put it aside. The constant, leave it aside. You don't need to bother with the multiplication. Uh, so that's right here. The first thing they use what you, you have to find, they ask you to find the F derivative of phi and the G derivative of phi and the M derivative of phi. So when you find this two, you can find the last one, right? And they ask you to find what? Find the derivative, uh, quotient rule first. And they can find the f5 derivative, g5 derivative, right? And uh, f5 derivative just from the graph, five. You got to use this slope right now. Use the second leg of the segment, find the slope. And then g, you can based on the definition to derivative, things like that, right? And after that, you will find um, whatever here. No problem? Okay, that's what they're looking for. They ask you, how do you find that? And then, if you go third one, they say what? Find the value of x in between negative two, one and two, make this two equal. So when you do this part, you see what they ask for, huh? look right here. To make this two function equal, so you need to find what? H derivative. And then F, this one, this one equal. So you make this two equal, f derivative, h derivative equal, and then you solve the equation. Be careful. When you solve this equation at this time, I just show you a little bit, okay? This one, you cannot do this one by hand right now, because you want to show h derivative of the x equals to f derivative of the x, like this, right? You need to find what the x value, make this one true. So f, h derivative is what? This one. This one equals what? F2 is what? Two, okay, this one. So you move the two on this side, you go what? five X, no. You're gonna have five uh, E to the X and the minus nine cosine X, like this one, right? but you minus two on both sides. Pretty too close. So you have, Five e x minus nine cos n x. This is a h derivative, right? And the minus the two must be equal to zero, right? Because you minus two on both sides. Now you cannot solve this function by hand. You have to what? Use this one key into the calculator. Be careful here right now. You need to set up the mode of the angle here, cosine x, x is the angle. You use the radian, okay? And then you find the zero. Do you know how to find the zeros? We use the calculator, huh? Are you sure? Okay, let me just show you the last part here, we're gonna die, okay? So we just go here, you go equal equation. Oh, first thing first, check the mode. Mode is on the radian. And then you go to, uh, y equal, you key in the function there, okay? When you key in the function and then you go second function calculate and then you go the second one, zero. You know that? And then they got a left bound, enter, upper bound, enter, equal. So you can write about 0 0.622, 0 0.622. But be careful, there are many curves there, but it's just limited to what? 
<coughs> Image works. Negative one to one. We don't care about the other uh, zeros or x intercepts. Is that clear? Very good. One and a half hour, enjoy the math, eh? Do the work, catch up the work. I'm looking for, you know, upgrade the grades and prepare right now and for the finals also. Every day do the work and put in the turn in for the one you make up, let me know what's the days and time. Day. Okay. All right. Yes, of course.